20 piping design skills to learn to become master in piping design. First one, process flow diagram. Process flow diagram is generally a diagram that represents the process flow of a process unit that shows the major equipments and valves. It doesn't show the micro level details like in PNID. So for a piping design engineer, you must have a general knowledge about process flow diagram at least to efficiently read the process flow diagram in order to understand the process flow. Number two is PNID, process and instrumentation diagram or it can be piping and instrumentation diagram. Basically, this is the much more detailed process flow scheme and diagram of a process unit. This exactly describes the micro level items such as instruments and micro level units and valves and small valves, drain lines and everything. As a piping design engineer, you must have an efficient understanding about how to read the PNID and ability to convert the PNID into a piping layout. And number three is PMS or piping class. Piping material specification or it can be named as a piping class. It is basically known as pipe spec where you will find the list of items such as pipes, valves and um, fittings and uh, OLEDs and gaskets and bowls, different types of fittings also available in the PMS. And as a piping design engineer, you must be able to pick the right one for the requirements that, are, that has been required for your piping layout. So you should be able to read the piping class much more efficiently so that you can convert the material to use for the design basically. Number four, pipes and fittings. Pipes and footings are a much more needed items in any of the piping design. You must know what are pipes and what are fittings. How many different types of pipes are available and how many different types of fittings are available. In fittings, you have multiple categories actually and what are the types, where it is used, when it is used, what is the requirement. So what is the basic standards of these fittings, what is the basic standards of the pipes, all those things you need to aware about it. So that will help you to bring the good piping design from your mind. Number five, valves. Valves are one of the primary item in piping design. There are multiple different types of valves are available. You must be able to understand the different types of valves and how it is used, how the orientation needs to be there, whether it is a manual operated or gear operated or pneumatic operated or hydraulic operated. All these things you need to have an idea about the valves actually. So that will help you to uh, deliver a better piping design output. Number six, piping layout. Piping layout is one of the major deliverable in piping design that actually brings out the entire design of a particular layout actually. So you must have a clear understanding about the piping layout. What are the things that needs to be shown in the piping layout and what not to be shown in the piping layout? How piping layout needs to be designed? What are the important primary criteria that needs to be considered for a piping layout? Because it's one of the primary deliverables in the piping design. And the seventh, equipment layout. Equipments are considered to be one of the primary item and one of the major item in the any process units. So you must have an understanding about how to place an equipment, where to place an equipment, why to place an equipment in a particular location. So all these things you need to have an idea because if your equipment placement goes wrong actually, probably you may not be able to deliver the good piping design and also that will damage the process flow conditions. And moreover, it will increase the overall cost of production. So equipment layout, it's one of the primary important thing that a piping design engineer should learn. Eighth is pipe routing. Pipe routing is one of the primary piping design skills that is required for all the piping designers and design engineers in order to develop the right piping layout. Because if your routing goes wrong, there are many other factors will not help you to match in the process unit right from the cost and maintenance and accessibility and the overall efficiency of the plant actually. So pipe routing is one of the primary skills that you have to learn. If you want to learn about the pipe routing, you can take the courses from Pemidaka. In Pemidaka, you have a descriptive teaching of the pipe routing and if you go through the particular link that I have shown in this particular video, you will be able to understand about what is pipe routing and what are the different knowledges that are required for a, to develop a good pipe routing. All these things are covered in this particular course. Ninth is a pipe support. Pipe supports and pipe routing are much more integrated items because if your supports are not appropriate, you will not be able to save the pipes basically. So pipe supports are the one that necessarily saves the lives of the piping. So if your pipe support goes wrong, definitely that will cause a lot of damages in the piping design. So pipe support means you should know what are the different types of pipe supports, 
where to use a particular uh, type of pipe support and how to use it actually what is the engineering requirement for a pipe support and what are the necessary uh, recommendations that you have to see in order to uh, place a pipe supports all these things that you have to understand so pipe supports and pipe uh, routing it's one of the very integrated items and both of these courses are available with Pemidaka you can go and check the courses to for more details and if you have any query you can find my number in the course details you will be able to directly reach out to me so uh, we will be having a discussion to clarify your doubts actually and the tenth skill is international standards and codes it's really important to understand about the international standards and codes because these are the standards and codes from where the design is described actually. So if you are not in a position to understand what the standard says for actually then you will not be able to understand the basis of the design. So as a piping design engineer you need to have the strong knowledge about international standards and codes. Basically in piping design we are using ASME B31.3 and there are many other standards that we are using in ASTM and ASME as well. So as a piping design engineer you need to have the list of this standards and you should be also able to understand what the standards actually says for actually what is the recommendation of the standard is for actually now let's go to the 11th one piping materials in piping we use different types of materials CS, SS, alloy and there are PVCs there are FRP pipings there are cement coated lines there are different types of materials that have been used actually as a piping design engineer you have to understand where are these materials are used and why it is used what are the international standards of this use actually what is the specification of this material what is the primary criteria of using this material how corrosion allowance works with this material all these details you need to understand only then you can become a master in order to become a master you should know enough knowledge about a particular subject and this is the way by increasing different skills you will be able to become a master actually so that's what I'm trying to say over here so piping material is one of the uh, vast area where you will be able to find a lot of good informations about pipes and um, fittings materials basically even valve materials so that will give you a more clarity about how the entire system works of in, in terms of materials twelfth one is a pipe stress analysis pipe stress analysis helps you to identify with the stressed portion of the piping in order to save the piping at the when the stresses are higher when the loads are higher and also it helps you to uh, design the pipe loads for a specific load condition so as a piping design engineer if you know the pipe stress analysis you will be able to design your piping layout design the piping system much more efficiently than others so those who do not have an experience of pipe stress analysis will not be able to understand the thermodynamic movement flexibility analysis how the nozzle loads works how the support loads works so all these things are necessarily required for a piping design engineer to uh, develop the piping layouts in a much more efficient way basically. 13th, 2D drawing preparation. What is 2D drawing preparation? It's nothing but using a 2D softwares much more efficiently than others. So 2D preparation is not a simple task. You need to have a clear idea about the 2D preparation, where to start and where to finish basically. And in conceptual, how you'll do it, in detail engineering, how you'll do it, in detail a feed engineering, how you'll do it. So basically for a 2D preparation, you need to have an idea about of the stages of development. I need to idea about the clear visualization because in 3D, you will get a lot of visualization. In 2D, you will not be able to visualize, right? So as a person from 2D, if you are able to visualize and your strength of assessing will be much more stronger than the people who are working in 3d so 2d is one of the fundamental requirement of any piping design engineers because even now most of the countries uses the piping layouts in 2d so 2d preparation is one of the vital skill that a piping designer should learn 14 3d software skill what is 3d software skills in piping we have a specific 3d softwares are being used there are SP3Ds, there are E3Ds, there are CADWorks, there are many other 3D softwares that are being in place of use in multiple uh, industries and various companies and various engineering um, industries basically. So basically, you need to aware about the primary 3D softwares that are in place. Basically, we are focusing on the SP3D and E3D. And if you know multiple other softwares, that will definitely add value in terms of increasing the possibility of getting a job, in, in terms of increasing the possibility of getting your CV filtered, because you know much more other softwares compared to other guys. So instead of focusing on one particular 3D softwares, if you know multiple 3D softwares, and moreover, if you know the different options in the 3d software almost all the options you need to have a proficiency 
it is simply a difference between how much you know in a one particular software than others so that will differentiate your software uh, 3d software modeling skill so in modeling skill you need to increase the speed as well so if your speed is really low definitely people will not be happy about your modeling you need to have a speed and you need to have a clear understanding about the software you need to have a different idea of different softwares how it works actually so basically you should have a proficiency in 3d softwares especially those which are used in the piping design uh, industries basically 15th is a data sheet in piping design we prepare data sheet for various items especially there are different types of valves which are non standard valves that for that you have to prepare a data sheet and there are different types of a specialty items for that you have to prepare a data sheet so as a piping design engineer to grow further to grow stronger and to have the successful growth actually you need to have all these skills so data sheet preparation is one of the key skill for a piping design engineer you should know what is, what is data sheet what are the informations to be inserted in the data sheet how data sheet needs to be procured from where the input needs to be requested what are the piping inputs that needs to be provided in the data sheet all these things you should be aware about 16th is engineering specification in piping design there are many engineering specifications needs to be prepared for various items engineering specification for example if you want to buy a strainer you need to prepare an engineering specification what is engineering specification that will tell you the mechanical requirements and the process requirements and the um, uh, testing requirements and the inspection requirements and the design uh, document requirements how the document needs to be sub submitted all these details this specification will have actually it will have a quality requirements it will have a safety requirements all certifications required and standards that needs to be complied uh, for from the particular vendor all these details will be provided in the engineering specifications 17th is a plot plan plot plan is not as simple as equipment layout in equipment layout you will be focusing on the equipments but plot plan is not necessarily as same as the equipment layout because plot plan that actually calls for a much more bigger details for the entire plot you need to have an understanding about how different process unit works what is the order that you have to fit in actually and what is upwind direction of the requirements what is downwind direction requirements so where the uh, flash stack needs to be installed where tank form needs to be installed all this idea you need to have for the plot plan so plot plan preparation it's not an easiest task either but at the same time it is one of the necessary uh, item that a piping design engineer should aware about so only then you will be able to successfully work in any projects because most of the piping design deliverables is plot plan is one of the primary piping design deliverables 18th is feasibility and conceptual studies generally these studies are done at the very initial stage of any project in order to see whether this project is feasible or not if it is feasible you need to have a list of options because which option is better and which option is the worst in each and every option you need to provide the pros and cons of the particular option so that that details will help the engineering team collectively to take a better decision basically as a piping design engineer you must have an idea about what is feasibility and conceptual study so that if any new project comes to you actually you will be able to do on your own 19th is feed front end engineering design that is a full form of feed which is actually a very next stage of feasibility and conceptual studies so you will be making much more detailing than you have done in the conceptual and feasibility stage so in case of plot plan you will be detailing more such as you have to ensure the location of the equipment and you have to uh, plan for the pipe tracks and you have to ensure that the necessary piping spaces are given in the plot plan between equipments and you have to consider the general pipe stress um, uh, thermodynamic expansions in order to consider the space between equipments all these things you will put in a little more effort in order to do much more detailing so that your next stage detailings are completely done feed is basically a particular set of documents that collectively comes from different disciplines like a process uh, piping and a cna electrical all departments will prepare a set of documents for a particular project and that will be given for a bidding to go for a detail engineering so now our last skill is a detail engineering so detail engineering is nothing but the very next stage of feed so the first is feasibility and second is feed 
and third is detail engineering in detail engineering basically you have to detail the entire design in order to produce the right construction drawing so that you can deliver this drawing for a construction for developing the actual installation at the field basically so in detail engineering you have to ensure that each and every dimensions are right and you have to ensure that all vendor inputs are available and you have to finalize all the vendor drawings and you have to ensure that the nozzle orientations are perfect and whether it is really approved in the vendor drawings or not all necessary details even micro level details for the instruments and flange connections or ratings and pipe specs and everything needs to be finalized and finally it has to go as an engineering drawing so you will be delivering a set of piping deliverables such as a plot plan piping layout equipment GAs and isometric MTOs and pipe support details and so many things basically so in detail engineering it's basically a completion of the piping design projects so in this video we have seen 20 piping design skills if you are aware about these 20 piping design skills then it is easy for you to grab the greater opportunity in piping design industries i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra